weekly in-depth view of agriculture up close. This is In the Field. Presented by Gordon's Feed and Pet. We are just south of Gordon's Feed and Pet in Rogersville at the Springfield Riding Club to learn firsthand what goes into those diets of a horse. So Kayla, you're employed by Purina, but you work exclusively with all five Gordon's Feed and Pet uh, stores all across mm -hmm. Southwest Missouri. So take me through that relationship and how you work hand in hand with those stores. Mm -hmm. So when a dealership decides that they want an LPS, they contract with Purina, so they assign you just to that specific dealership account. So there's some Purina reps that work with multiple dealerships. I just work with Gordon's with all five of their locations. So for Gordon's, that's an effort to kind of differentiate and make themselves unique within the market as compared to other Purina dealers. So I don't have to travel overnight necessarily. I just work the Southwest Missouri area specific to the same dealership. Well, I understand you specialize in beef and equine, mm -hmm. and most people in Southwest Missouri and in the Ozarks are familiar with beef cattle, yes. beef cattle nutrition, Yes. And but maybe fewer are familiar with what it takes and what goes into the diet of our horse friends. So yes. take me through kind of um, you know your relationship with like mm -hmm. here at a riding club, but yeah. also your relationship with, with private farms and, and mm -hmm. how you incorporate your day to day. So I think first of all, and you kind of hit it on the head when you said there's a lot of folks that are not familiar with the horse market mm -hmm. here. So Southwest Missouri actually houses some of the top nationally ranked trainers in multiple horse disciplines, both with the American Quarter Horse Association, mm -hmm. Reigning Horse Association, lots of different things. There's a lot of Arabian trainers. So the horse industry encompasses a lot. It encompasses the performance horse industry, we've got breeders, we've got just folks that have them as recreational animals and things like that. So it's a lot different than the beef producer side. Of course, our goals are a lot different mm -hmm. too. We're not trying to get as many pounds as possible so that we can take these animals to market. Our goal is to feed them efficiently so they can ultimately perform in whatever discipline it is that they're doing to the best of their ability. Well, you said perform, and these are performance yes. animals. When I'm feeding my beef cattle at home, a flat mm -hmm. ration goes to my replacement females or yes. my, my breeding age females or the, you know, the cows getting ready to calve. Yes. But what's unique here is each horse mm -hmm. has a unique ration, um, yes. unique to their needs and their breeds. Mm -hmm. So how do you identify those for each one? They're different breeds, they're performing at a different level, the age plays a pretty significant factor mm -hmm. as well. So just with those three things that I mentioned, all three of those require a different caloric need, which in some cases can be three different feeds to meet that. So there's also things like medical, metabolic things that kind of can play into if we've got some that maybe have some insulin issues and are really sensitive to starches and sugars, that's going to affect what kind of program we use. So well, those are the, where we start. I always ask whenever it's a horse person, okay, what, what is it that you're doing? So mm -hmm. what's your goal? And then what kind of horse do you have? How old are they? Mm -hmm. And how, you know, what, what, how would you encompass their workload? So not only here's the discipline you're doing, but would you say that you're, they're a light workload, moderate, heavy, and then from there, we can kind of start exploring some options as far as how to meet whatever the goal is. What is a few tips that you can provide um, mm -hmm. people to think of things they need to think of before just throwing a scoop of oats out yeah. there. I think you've got to know not just because so and so told me to feed it but knowing what's in the feed the research behind it and that's one thing you know Purina has a research farm so all of the feed that we're recommending on a from a Purina product has mm -hmm. been tested and has all of that to stand behind it so I think that's the most important and don't be afraid to ask questions either I still tell people, that's what I love about my job, is I get to learn every single day on farm mm -hmm. with folks. I'm still learning. We're all in this together in that kind of sense. And so don't be afraid to ask questions on, hey, do you, do you think my horse looks okay? Do you think I should change this diet accordingly? Those types of things. And then from there too, I would recommend keeping it pretty consistent. Once you find a program that works for you and for that horse, mm -hmm. don't you know, don't fix what's not broken is what I tell folks a lot. So I've got some folks that I work with that have fed strategy for 20 plus years and they don't want to change it because it works and that's great. 